Hi, Ted Brooks with MagLogix. Here to talk to you about an incredible sales call I had just the other day with the kind of company you all want to work for, the kind of company that puts safety first. We're talking you don't go on the shop floor without your hard hat, your eyeglasses, your hearing protection, your steel-toed shoes. This is the kind of company that does a lot of lifting and uses a magnet to do lifting of their steel pieces. A lot of I-beams, a lot of square tube stock. The kind of company that actually goes through and weighs every piece of steel so you know what you're lifting. They mark center lines so they know exactly where they should be putting the magnet. They know how thick the steel is, they know how much it weighs, they know what their magnet can do, but they don't know what their magnet can do on different thicknesses of steel. And the other day they had a quarter inch thick square tube stock piece of steel fall. Could have created employee injury, thank goodness it didn't happen in this case. And they needed to know why, so I went out there and had a great discussion with them. The issue with magnets is all the variables that go into the relationship of the magnetic force and the piece of steel that you're trying to lift. The thicker the steel, the better. With our multipole technology, we can do things nobody else in the world can do today. We can take a magnet like this, our little TML 500 pounder with 12 north and south poles is unbelievably powerful even on quarter inch thick steel. It would not have dropped the piece of steel that they dropped with their magnet. When you look at the sides of these magnets, you notice the most important thing you need to know. How good is that magnet that you have in your hands on what thickness of steel? Then we'll talk about all the other variables you need to understand as well. On a piece of steel that's a quarter inch thick, I'm about 90% full power. The magnet they were using was about 30% full power. Then you've got to know what is the relationship, what is the variables that are going to cause you trouble when you make the lift. If it's not a perfectly flat piece, you can expect less holding force. If it's got epoxy coating or paint or rust, there's less holding force. If it's thinner material than in our case, quarter inch or three eighths, you can expect a little bit less holding force. If it's got missing material, such as you're taking the skeleton out of your plasma table, again, less holding force. So the key to all of this is very simple, it's a test lift. We'll show you another video exactly how you do a test lift to make sure that you know that whatever the actual numerical value is of that magnet on that piece of steel at this moment, it's enough to do the job safely. You're not going to get hurt. That's the whole goal we have here at MagLogix, to make sure that you're lifting safely with a magnet that can do the job, that's not going to hurt you, and that you're always holding on to the piece of steel that you're attracted to. This comparison chart is extremely important. The upper chart is for the MagLogix 550 pound lifting magnet, while the lower chart is from a standard lifting magnet that is widely available and represents the majority of the magnets on the market today. The first thing to notice is that the MagLogix magnet offers full holding force starting at about 3 8 inch thick steel, while the standard magnet requires 2 and a half inch thick steel to give you the full holding force you paid for. When we look at the same thickness, 3 8 inch for both magnets, it becomes critically important that the user understands that they have to derate standard magnets by about 67%, as their holding force is only one third of what the label says it is when the magnet is used on 3 8 inch thick steel. On quarter inch thick steel, the MagLogix retains over 80% of full power, while the standard magnet has lost 83% of its power. It becomes quite obvious why this safety-conscious company had an incident with their magnet when used on quarter-inch thick wall tube stock.